So before we get started, I want to say a quick hello to a big fan of the show, Jackson. Hi, Hi Jackson. Jackson! Thanks for sending us an email. Oh, but hey, we better get the show started. Hold on. Hi, welcome to the Jordan Michael Tuesday show. My assistant today is Grandma Michael Tuesday. Well, it's about time. Everybody's probably been missing me like crazy. Hey, why are you wearing all that safety gear? Well, because like I said, my assistant today is Grandma Michael Tuesday. What? After I've always treated you so kindly and lovingly, well, uh, roll the videos of me treating him so lovingly and kindly. Uh, well, I'm actually in charge of charge of it. I can't believe you think I would hurt you, even as right now, as we speak this moment, I'm making you your favorite pie. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, Grandma, but every single time we do something, I... Oh. Okay, ah. I'm going to mix the pie, mix the pie, mix the pie. Did you say pie? Completely for you. Oh. <laughs> Can I have it? Here, have a lick. Oh, as soon as it's done cooking. <laughs> There's nothing on this. <laughs> but the pie is completely mine? All you have to do is come get it. Thanks. Welcome. Well, you know, that fits perfectly with today's verse. Well, that's because you wrote the script. Uh -huh. Well, in Joshua chapter 6, Joshua is standing before Jericho, a fortified city that probably would have seemed impossible to conquer. Yet God called Israel to conquer and possess this land. In Joshua 6.2, the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and valiant warriors. What? What Joshua was looking at in the natural was a fortified city. Yet God said he gave it to Joshua. Interesting. Joshua was probably on the outside dealing with all kinds of insecurity and fears. Yet the Lord told Joshua what the actual state of the land was from his heavenly perspective. God had given the land to Joshua and Joshua needed to go claim his inheritance no matter how it looked or how he felt. It kind of reminds me of the time when Th Thomas went on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> Quiet down! Ah! Thomas! I'm just excited about the scavenger hunt. Good. So I will read this clue and it will lead you to other clues that will finally lead you to a gift for each one of you. It's already ours? Look at my cotton. It's oh. already yours. You just need to follow the clues. How do we know you're on the level? Because I'm your mother and I've never lied to you in your entire life. How else? Okay. Well, your first clue is. I bark and bark in evening night. I eat my kibbles with every bite. I chase a stick, it's quite a sight. In my collar, the next clue is tight. Check Clarence's collar, quick. Thomas, I don't eat kibbles. But what if she's lying and there's no gifts at the end? What if she's just being mean? What happens then? You won't have to wonder or take a long hike. Go to the garage, it's under... Uh, Sorry, I can't pronounce big words. The. It's under the bike. Wait, what if the bike is a metaphor for something? Like what? I don't know, maybe like a not a bike. Deep. But what if she's still angry from last week when I sinned? And when I get to the end, there's a big pit to fall in. Hey guys, I found it. You looked real high, you've looked in the sky, you looked on the ground. Now go look in the mailbox because that's where your presents are for crying out loud. Mailbox? Well, we don't see the presents. This all could be fake. What if the last clue says go jump in a lake? Ah, uh, sorry, I don't usually say that last part out loud. Thomas, have your parents ever lied to you before? Uh, no, that'd be a negative. Well, then you have to have faith that they're not lying to you now. I don't see the presents. But your mom said that they're already ours, so we just have to believe her and follow her plan for receiving them. Thomas and his friends did just that. And do you know what they found? Oh, oh that's mine. Oh, oh, wow, $20. Wow, a bike. Oh, wow, a super soaker, 2000 Thomas was so happy he took faith in what his mom had said. What? <laughs> <laughs> Defend yourself! I gotta reload! <laughs> you know, for all of us who are in Christ Jesus, there are promises for us. Promises about who we are, how God sees us, our inheritance in Christ, the authority He's given us in His name, 
his love for us, his call on our lives, and on and on and on. Oftentimes we don't see or feel things yet that God has already promised us. That's when God calls us to add faith to what he already said, no matter how we feel. Joshua took faith in what God said, and he was able to receive the promise in the natural. So in our lives, where is God calling us to add faith to what he already said is true from heaven's perspective? Just like you needed to believe that this pie was going to be all yours when it was done. Oh, give me, give me, give me! It's all yours! <gasps> yeah, but Grandma, God's gifts are really good. Actually, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's good. I do like, I still do like pie. I like it on a fork plate. Slowly. I think it's slower than this. 